ओके गुड आफ्टरनून टूडेज टॉपिक इज वर्नर्स थेरी ऑफ कॉर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इट इज अ चैप्टर नंबर थर्ड एंड सेकंड ऑफ द कॉर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री ओके सो इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी ऑलरेडी सॉ द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ कॉर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री इन दैट वी सॉ दी डिफरेंट टर्म्स विच इज यूज इन कॉर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री and as well as there is a ipsc nomenclature of different coordination complexes we saw the rules applying the rules and we get the nomenclature of number of examples number of compounds today we are going to start actual the beginning of coordination compounds coordination chemistry in first lecture we just know about what is a coordination compounds which terms are used how giving the name to the coordination complexes so it is just overall introduction about the coordination chemistry but actually coordination chemistry start from this chapter it is just beginning means how coordination chemistry is introduced so werners is the name of the scientist and he was introduced the coordination chemistry and that's why he was called or he is the father of coordination chemistry and at the age of 26 he was introduced the coordination chemistry and won the nobel prize in 1911 for this work so he is awarded by the nobel prize in 1911 but in 1893 he first time he was introduced the different concept of inorganic compounds he try to work on different reactions the reactions first of all he is trying to reactions with the metal halides with the different type of ligands different type of solutions so he saw the different complexes are formed but there and he check out the properties and some compound shows different properties i already told you there are the difference between the complex compound and double salt compound so some compounds when react together that time they shows the double salt property means in a solid state and in a liquid state they shows the positive test of individual constituents but some of the compounds which fail to show the all the test of individual atom in a solution state that time he try there is a composition because there is a empirical formula but complexes or compounds shows different kind of taste so that time he uh, suggest there are the compounds are different coordination compounds are different as compared to normal salt compounds so that time coordination chemistry was introduced okay so when once he know about the coordination compounds that time he suggest some thing some observations about the coordination compounds and these are the postulates these are the assumptions he was uh, introduced and that assumptions help us to understand coordination compounds and their structure and geometry basically once we know the structure or uh, once we know the molecular formula of coordination compounds after that our next aim is to predict their structure and predict their geometry so werner's theory help us to know what is the possible structure of given coordination compound okay so before that we going to start some assumptions so it is a just introductory part so another part is assumptions of or postulates okay so what are the assumptions and postulates of werner's theory okay so he suggests the first assumption is uh, every coordination compound has two types of valencies means two types of valency valency means what it is the number to how many number of attachment with the central part because in coordination compounds there are two types of uh, constituents one is metal another is ligand so if metal is there some ligands are present some ligands are directly attached ligand may be neutral positive or it is a negative so in complex it is possible there are three kinds of uh, ligands they are attached directly to the 
central part. But we already know the structures of coordination compounds, some anions or cations which are present, basically anions. Cation is positively charged, so it is a look like or behave as a metal, same as a metal because both are deficient. But the anions which are present outside the complex, they also try to attach with the metal. But the question is, they are directly attached or indirectly attached? Okay, so considering this thing, Werner suggests the first assumption, assumption is there are two valences of cord in a coordination complexes. Means every compound has two valences. This is the first assumption he is predicted. In that, the second, there are two valences. He said the primary valence is there. Primary valency means he suggests the coordination some coordination compounds not every coordination compound some coordination compound has primary valency the valency also called as ionizable valency ionizable valency means which are directed along or directed toward the central atom or ion, but it is ionizable. And when it is ionizable, it is represented as a, in a structure with the dotted line. With the dotted line. It is ionizable. Means when we ionize the compound in the form of cation and anion, it is ionizable. That means if the anions which are present outside of the complex, suppose X anions are there, any X. So these are the ionizable because we get the cation part and the anion part. So this anion will be react with another reagent to form their precipitate. We will see in the next part. Okay, so these are the ionizable because these are easily react with other. So it is a primary valency. Okay, it is ionizable valency. It represented as a dotted line in a structure. So, it is a second assumption. He said third assumption is every coordination compound has secondary valency. Secondary valency. So, secondary valency means what? This is the number, this is the valency which are directly means the number of ligands, basically ligands or it is atom, ion or molecule which are directly pointed or directly attached to the central atom or ion is the secondary valency and it is directly considered as a coordination number. It is equal to coordination number of the complex. So secondary valency means ligand which are present inside the coordination sphere. It is a coordination sphere. So the secondary valency placed in the inside the coordination sphere, primary valency present outside the coordination sphere. Okay, it is ionizable. But this is not ionizable means suppose we consider this example FeCN6. Okay, K4 FeCN6. It is a one of the example. So it ionizes as a K plus, 4K plus, and this one, Fe, Cn, 6, 4 minus, it is ionization. So this is the secondary valency. Further their ionization means Fe and Cn separate out, ionize, ionize is not possible. So there is non-ionizable. So it is equal to coordination number or also called as non-ionizable valency non-ionizable, it is directly relate the coordination number. The primary valency is non-ionizable, uh, sorry, just ionizable, it directly relate the oxidation number, oxidation number. So oxidation number uh, is balanced by this valency. It represented as a dotted line, but it represented as a wedge line. It represented as a wedge line or solid line. These are the assumptions. Primary valency is non-directional, means 
primary valency means ionizable valency attached to the central atom at any way. There is no direction, no specific direction required for the ionizable valency because it is ionizable. It is not permanently attached, it is just temporarily attached by the dotted lines. But here, in case of secondary valency, it is non-ionizable, it shows relate the coordination number of the central part, central atom. That means it directly attached to the central atom or ion and it is oriented in a specific direction in a space. That means if there are four ligands are attached, the four ligands are not randomly attached to the central atom. The ligands attach specifically in a, in a particular direction, in a space to the central part that will make the geometry. There is a geometry because every coordination complex has geometry. So geometry depends on number of secondary valences, how many ligands are directly attached and how they orient in a space. So Werner's introduced the phenomenon is stereochemistry. We will discuss in later part. So stereochemistry also uh, exhibit in the coordination complexes, same as organic chemistry, because you're already familiar with stereochemistry of organic compounds, same as here is a uh, stereochemistry of inorganic complexes. So these are the assumptions. So in summary, keep in mind, very important, coordination complexes may have the two types of valency, not common compulsory, but may have the two types of valency because only some compounds has ionizable primary valency, but every compound has secondary valency. Which are, there are prim primary valency and secondary valency. Primary is ionizable, it relates the oxidation number of the compound, it represented as a dotted line, it is non-directional because it is attached from any side of the plane to the central atom, but secondary valency is the permanent, it relates the coordination number, it is non-ionizable and represented as a wedge line and it is the directional because it's directed in a space through the particular uh, angle, through, through the particular angle. So ligands are attached there and that makes the geometry and uh, they show the stereochemistry in the complexes depending on nature of ligand. So this is all about the uh, assumptions and postulates of Werner's theory of coordination compounds. We move to the next uh, Werner's formulation of coordination compounds. Formulation means how coordination compounds are formed. If they form, how we identify their structures? Once there is a particular reaction is happen, that time, okay, there is a formation of compound. So that type of compound, we check out, there are two ways, physical method and chemical method to uh, analyze the product. Okay, so physical method means we can use a different types of uh, spectroscopic methods to elucidation of the structure. But chemical method used to find out uh, there is the reactivity, means what happened there. Because empirical formula we know, but how, which part of the compound is react with other, that will prove how the structure is possible. So chemical method and physical method used to determination or to elucidation of the structure of the uh, inorganic compounds, same thing as in a organic chemistry also. So here we're going to discuss the formulation of coordination complexes. Okay, formulation of coordination compounds. Okay. So, Werner's first of all try the reaction between uh, cobalt chloride plus NH3. Mean just dissolve the cobalt chloride in water and add NH3 is there. So he get the different types of composition. Means there are three CLs are removed by. So using the empirical formula it is possible to get the different kind of uh, series of compounds which is listed in your notes or listed in books. So which type of series is given? So first of all, he, was, he see there is a NH3-6 Cl3. Secondly, observe CO NH3-5 Cl3. Then CO NH3-4 
for Cl3, CO, NH3, thrice Cl3. Means how many ligands, NH3 ligands will attach to the cobalt? It is the possible, there are four complexes. Six ligands, five ligands, four ligands, three ligands. There is no two ligands. Because coordination number of cobalt is six, so maximum three plus three is six. So these are the series of complexes are formed. But what is the structure? Which is the possible structure of given complexes? So how we find, a, find the structure of given complexes? He is complexes there, he is four complexes there, he is reaction. He is cobalt chloride react with the uh, NH3 molecule, NH3 solution, ammonia solution. So to predict the structure of given four compounds, how they predict it? So for that, very important thing is, uh, first of all, this here is a halide. So halides are present in empirical formula and you know, if any halide compound is given, you know the silver trace silver nitrate test okay because silver nitrate test is used to find out the presence of chloride in inorganic qualitative analysis suppose we react this solution with silver nitrate silver nitrate okay when it react with silver nitrate he saw uh, there are three molecules three precipitations are formed that means here he get the thrice agcl precipitation of three AgCl molecules. When react with this one, same solution of silver nitrate, the observation is here is a two AgCl, two precipitations are formed. In third case, again they react with, here just single AgCl precipitation has happened. But in case of their last one, no, PPT, no PPT. That means using this observation, he concluded in first complex, there are three CLs which are ionizable and they form the bond with silver and form thrice AgCl molecules. In second case, only two CLs are ionizable. In third case, only one CL is ionizable. In last case, there is no CL is ionizable means here in first case okay there is no any differentiate because all cl's are precipitated but here there are three cl but why only two cl's are precipitated where is the remaining one in third case only one cl is precipitated out what happen about the remaining two and here cl is present three chlorides are present but there is no cl is react with ag ag silver nitrate that means no precipitation so why this happen that means here all CLs are ionizable means he conclude the complexes has two types of valences primary and secondary or ionizable or non-ionizable okay so primary said that means it react first as compared to second one that's why called primary and secondary valency but here there are three CLs that means every compound has two types of valences ionizable and non-ionizable. Only ionizable valences will react with silver nitrate and form the AgCl precipitation. But the other which are not getting the precipitation, that means these are the non-ionizable valences. So using these observations and chemical reactions, he predict the structures of given compounds. So we're going to discuss it. How to predict the structure? We consider first example. In first example, all the three CLs are non-ionizable. Means in a structure, all six NH3 are ionizable. That means six NH3s are present. Here only two ionizable. That means only five uh, NH3s are present. Because the NH3 is not easily predicted by naked eyes. So the conclusion why 5 here, why 4 here, why 3 here because how many CLs are ionizable because in given compound the compound shows coordination number 6 because it is the tetrahedral geometry uh, using the physical parameter, physical techniques. So that's why he concluded if there are 3 are ionizable means all 6 NH3 present in a uh, coordination sphere but here only 2 that means only 5 NH3 present with that one CL is there. 
only four NH3 is present, with that data, twos are present. So using this observation, he try to predict the structures and geometries of the compounds. So we try first. The first observation says all three CLs are ionizable, means the secondary valency is completed by or satisfied by the all the NH3 molecules. So here, okay, so that means all C NH3s are attached to directly to the cobalt. because all are attached through the secondary valency. It is directly oriented and we can predict this is a tetrahedral geometry. It is later part in a stereochemistry. What about the 3CL? So 3CL we can direct it here. By the dotted lines. That means this is a structure means the secondary valency which is pointed directly attached to the cobalt but the primary valency is attached to the uh, dotted line that means it is the primary valency here is the secondary valency and this is the structure okay for second case what happened there is a one of the cl is only 5 nh3 so we just changes here make a changes here so here is the nh3 CL. So I just replace one of the NH3 by the CL. So 5 NH3, 1 CL, 2 CLs are ionizable and 5 NH3 and 1 CL is non-ionizable. But we can predict this one this as a this means it is a solid line as well. Means this CL behave as a dual role. Dual rule, but it is not non ionizable, it is non ionizable, but it is uh, behave as a dual rule because in formula there are three CLs. You can write mention dotted line or not, but actually there are only three two ionizable. In case of third, only one precipitation is happen, means only one CL is ionizable. We can see the another CL is here, so two CLs are non ionizable, one CL is ionizable. In last case, one, two, we can replace one of the, here is a CL. So in last case, all CLs in a coordination sphere, that means it is the non-ionizable. So all are non-ionizable. So you can draw the structure of each individually. I already provided to you in a notes. So using this phenomena, we can predict the structure and geometry of the Werner's theory, using Werner's theory. So in next lecture, we're going to discuss the stereochemistry of Werner's theory and other things related to the Werner's coordination compounds. So we stop here today. This is just about the introduction of Werner's theory. We saw, see the, uh, we already saw the assumptions and all things. So here we're going to stop.